Hello, Jorbs here coming at you with another video from Jorbs Scribbles on the screen and talks about everything in the Slay the Spire compendium. Uh, I want to talk about Warcry today. Warcry is a card that a lot of new players get trapped in evaluation of. It might look at first glance like this card has sort of no downside. It costs zero, and it draws you a card, and then you get to put a card from your hand on top of your draw pile. And there are all sorts of latent hidden downsides, which we'll get to later, but the first immediate one to point out is you lose a card for putting this in your deck, basically. It costs you one card to draw it, then you draw one card, but then you put a card back on top of your draw pile. So it costs you two cards, and you only drew one card. So overall, you're at minus one card. So the very immediate thing to say about Warcry is card draw is incredibly important in this game. The two main resources in this game are energy and card draw. A huge amount of your energy, sorry, uh, your, well, I mean like energy as a person, not energy, like what you play the cards with. A huge amount of your effort, there you go, in a run, should be going towards making sure that you can draw good cards to use every turn of the run and putting bad cards in your deck or giving yourself a disadvantage for card draw is not going to let you do that you want to be getting rid of strikes and adding relics that draw you lots of cards you do not want to be adding war cry which costs you one card to draw basically um very weird things have to be happening for you to want an unupgraded war cry. One example could be that you had a dead branch but don't have many skills yet. If you have a dead branch and a corruption and don't have many skills yet, war cry might be pretty good. Another thing might be you have a deck that is all about getting demon form in play so it can play a reaper but it doesn't have much energy and for whatever reason you already have one or two copies of Havoc. All of a sudden, the fact that you're able to put a demon form on top of your deck and then Havoc it can perhaps be enough of an argument to put a Warcry in your deck. It's still unlikely. <laughs> it's still unlikely that adding a Warcry to your deck in that situation is going to be worth doing. Now that said, if you get a Warcry plus, it draws you two cards instead of one card. At that point, the card is card neutral. And so at that point, deciding whether you want the card or not becomes evaluating whether the upsides that it's giving you are enough to offset the downsides associated with having a card in your deck. And this is the next thing that a new player to the game might struggle with. Um, what's the downside of having a card that costs zero in your deck? Um, a lot of newer players might say that a card like this was free, um, which is... It's always a bit of a struggle to take someone coming to you and saying a card like this is free and like disarm them of that uh, misconstrued belief and explain all of the different things that are going on that make it so that there are costs associated with having this card in your deck and playing it. But first off, let's talk about the upsides of having a card like this in your deck. You're going to draw two cards with it. You're going to put a card from your hand on top of your draw pile. Okay, so it's an exhaust card. So stuff like Feel No Pain and Dark Embrace are going to like it. That's cool. It does dig you one card deeper into your deck that turn. So like, say you really want to put Demon Form in play. If you draw your hand of five cards and it has a Warcry Plus in it and Demon Form's not there, when you play Warcry Plus, you draw two cards. And so you get to see two cards deep in your deck, but then you put one card back, which means that if Demon Form is the seventh card of your deck, you'll be able to play it now. Whereas if you had like a Pommel Strike that drew one, you'd only get to the sixth card of your deck. So that's sort of nice. Um, it has that interaction with Havoc, which I mentioned earlier. It has interesting interactions with cards like Feed or Reaper or Spot Weakness, which you really want to be able to play on a specific turn. Impervious is another card where if you draw a really good block card, but nobody's actually attacking you, well, it would be nice to have a Warcry perhaps to put it on top of your deck for next turn so you can play it then. So all that's cool. Those are all upsides. I think it's easy to overestimate how important those upsides are. The things that I just said are very 
they don't have that much upside. The success case for them isn't that incredible and doesn't happen that often. And strong decks can usually achieve all of the things that that's going to achieve in better ways. An example would be if you build a deck that just draws all of its cards all the time, it has a Corruption Dark Embrace engine, for example, almost everything that I just said is completely irrelevant. So this card just doesn't do anything if you build a deck like that. Um, now it still exhausts for Feel No Pain and Dark Embrace, sure, that's, that's fine, but... Mm any other skill would too. What about this stuff? Oh, and another thing that likes this is like letter opener. You play lots of skills, it deals five damage per three skills you play. Cool, that's nice. But what about the stuff that doesn't? And I ran out of space on the screen here, but there's actually a tremendous amount of stuff that really doesn't like you doing this in the game. Snekawai is an immediate one. Uh, very commonly best boss relic for your deck, and it's going to randomize the cost of this card between zero and three. Whoops. This card does not have a very powerful effect, and you want cards with powerful effects when you have a snack Y randomizing their cost. Another is uh, Choker. Velvet Choker makes it so you can only cast or play six cards per turn. So here's this incredibly low impact card that's going to be taking one of your cards for Choker. Um, Pocket Watch wants you to only play three cards a turn, so you can draw an extra three cards next turn. Time Eater is going to punish you for spamming lots of cards. A heart hits you for two damage every time you play a card. The Chosen gives you a debuff where every time that you play a skill or a power, a daze gets put in your deck. Gremlin Knob gains strength every time that you play a skill. And so all of this stuff adds up and up and up and up. Even without considering the enemies. Oh, I don't need to get into that actually for a beginning video, but there are even things having to do with like card selection for gambling chip where having a a very low impact card like Warcry in your deck makes it harder for you to make good decisions um, as you play out your hands. But anyway, there are a lot of things in the game which are either very strong for the player and you'd be able to take advantage of without a card like Warcry, or quite difficult for the player to defeat and are going to punish you extra for having war crime. And so this is sort of the the min-maxing stuff that you're looking at when you're deciding whether to take this card. Generally, if it's not upgraded, you're not interested to begin with. If it is upgraded, you have to start thinking, are the upsides that I'm getting enough to outweigh the downsides from these enemies, these relics not working as well for my deck anymore? And sometimes it's the case that the upsides are a big enough deal, and sometimes it's the case that they aren't. <laughs> and one of the beautiful things about Slay the Spire is I don't even know myself every time, right? It's an incredibly complicated decision space, very hard to tell more and more as you play and get a better idea for how fights play out for different decks try to have an expectation of what your deck might feel like to play in different fights and then as you play the fight you can see if the fight actually played out how you expected and then if it didn't you can be like well did i just get unlucky yeah i sort of got unlucky so that's fine i expect to get unlucky sometimes or you might be like did i get unlucky no my deck basically did what i thought it would but I lost. <laughs> and so if you go into fights with expectations about what might happen and then you can constantly be updating your expectations, you can get better and better and better at this. But ultimately, um, I don't think within our lifetimes there will be anything that can tell us whether it's correct to take Warcry Plus or to skip it um, with certainty every time. There are some times that are going to be pretty obvious that you could take it. There are some times that are going to be pretty obvious that you shouldn't take it. And there are going to be some times which are in the middle and you're going to have to make a judgment call. And, you know, in situations like that, making sure that you understand all of the things that you can get out of the card, but also understand all of the downsides from taking the card is going to be key for making that decision well. And for me, that's a lot of the enjoyment of the game is trying to work all of those things out. I enjoy that the game isn't simple no matter how long you play it for. So that was a war cry. I basically said a lot of words to say basically don't take this card very often. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, hopefully you can find some situations where it's good, though. They definitely exist.
All right. Thanks for tuning in. Cool.